why are so many Christians and even pastors uh, falling for this ideology, falling for critical race theory? Uh, what's, what's the appeal? Because it seems like a lot of them are well-meaning. So what is it about critical theory? What is it about critical race theory in particular that, that tugs on the heartstrings of, of so many Christians and even pastors in the church today? Yeah, it's a real threat uh, for a number of reasons. It's it's it is a it is a worldview. By that I mean it's a system, it's a way of thinking that answers a lot of questions. You know, I mean, so if you buy into it, you say, okay, equality is us all having the same stuff. That you know, and that can make sense if you just throw the Bible in the garbage can. It's like, well, <laughs> we're all human beings, aren't we? We should all have the same stuff. And uh, that so that fits. And then you've got an eschatology going on, too, because uh, we don't all yet have that same stuff. Mm. We are not mm. all yet living as one, as John Lennon uh, sang about, you know, and imagine. And so we need to pursue it. And so you've got something you're moving toward. You know, we're going to progress toward this state of equality. And it's got a sense of moral uh, rightness to it. I mean, does don't aren't you for equality? Aren't you right. for everybody having the same things? And if you're not, it sounds like you want to hold on to your stuff, and uh, that means you're the bad guy. Mm. And therefore, you know, we, now we have conflict, and so it's going to take me courage to stand up to you and to help and tell you why you need to stop holding on to all of your stuff and begin to uh, hand it over. Mm. So you've got this whole system. You've got morality, you've got eschatology, and uh, something that has some teeth to it. So mm -hmm. as a system, it can be very appealing to people. Um, and then Christians, particularly, getting caught up in it, are just, we've just become too worldly. We haven't paid enough attention to Scripture and what God has told us to do. And so uh, we we see people talking about justice, and we're too quick to say, hey, uh, that sounds good. I'm all for justice, too, right. rather than stop and say, hey, what do you mean? And let me tell you what I mean. Yeah, that's good. I, one of the things I've been so blessed by uh, with your ministry is just the sufficiency of Scripture. I, I think, you know, we, we've fought that battle. I say the proverbial we. I, I wasn't around for that battle, but for the inerrancy of Scripture. And everybody's willing to kind of salute, you know, like that is a sword. It's double-edged. It's really sharp. And it looks really nice in that glass case on my mantle. You know, but like I, that is a sword. It's an authoritative sword, an effective sword. But there's a difference in acknowledging the sword and saluting the sword versus what you guys often talk about wielding the sword. Uh, the inerrancy of Scripture is one thing, and it's necessary. It's uh, paramount. But the sufficiency of Scripture, I think so many Christians who would profess to be Bible-believing Christians, they would say the Word of God is inerrant. But they, they just... Um, I don't even think they mean to. I just, they just haven't been taught. They haven't been educated. That the Bible has something to say. Thanks for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, uh, we hope that you'll take a moment and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can watch more content like this. Also, take a moment and give this video a like so that it can reach more people. And take a moment and click on the bell so that you'll be notified whenever we come out with new content. Thanks so much. God bless.